So three o'clock, we will start the second presentation. And uh, the second one is uh, mine. Uh, my name is Hae Gang uh, from South Korea. I'm working for Korea Research Institute for Human Settlements. And today, what I will introduce is uh, our ex experiences on developing geo-analytic functions for UN missions. So I have uh, uh, three co-authors, and I will introduce my co-author. Uh, unfortunately, among uh, two of my co-authors, so just one attended today. And also he will give a presentation together with me. So Mr. Uh, Timur, would you introduce yourself? Uh, thank you. Um, uh, my name is Timur. I'm in charge of geoanalytics at the uh, United Nations Geospatial Information Section. <laughs> so the contents I will deliver today is uh, first I will introduce why we uh, uh, did this kind of activity first and then we will introduce the requirements from the UN missions why they need the geoanalysis functions and also I will introduce also in terms of how uh, we developed so far, what we developed so far. So, and then I will introduce the user cases. Uh, we applied our development to some scenarios, which is very simplified scenarios. And then we, I conclude. So the further uh, background, you know, as you know, geoanalysis is an approach to apply statistical analysis to other analytic techniques to data, which is uh, uh, geographically, so people can recognize, uh, you know, the, the pattern of space uh, with a very nice visualized map and processing sp uh, spatial data and so on. So it pro it so geoanalysis that provides many advantages to the users. Uh, in for instance, the easy of uh, record uh, keeping of geographical changes and so on. So it's very really the same for the United Nations. So the United Nations also use geographical analysis to improve the efficiency of their situational awareness, uh, safety and security, monitoring crisis during the UN field operations and so on. So. Uh, the GIS section in United Nations uh, who provide uh, overall uh, support in using the geospatial analysis technology to the UN operations. Uh, they, in 2016, they uh, established the UN Open GIS initiative led by the UN GIS section under the UN Department of Operational Support uh, Department. So to leverage the free open source service, the geospatial technology in support of UN peace operation. So uh, there are several working groups developing the technology and geoanalysis is a third working group. So we named the Spiral 3 and it aims to provide open, ge uh, open source geoanalytic solution for UN operation. So the goal of this uh, working group is to uh, develop a uh, geoanalytical solution, not only just the functions. So uh, the core of this uh, Spiral 3 is uh, collecting first, uh, collecting the UN requirements and share the knowledge uh, on the, from the field with the developers. And second, uh, developing the geospatial anal analysis functions that we did, and third, we integrate so all the outcome with the other uh, working groups outcomes. So for, and also we develop the manual training materials and hosting conferences, etc. Et we are working on it. So. Uh, from now on, I will introduce uh, a part of our activities so from the requirement part. So mostly this requirement analysis and overall uh, monitoring is conducted by the uh, partner, co-leader, uh, Timur. So he will introduce uh, about the geo analysis for UN operation. Thank you. Um, so, no, it's okay, I'll use the... Uh, I stole this slide from my boss from King Su, <laughs> from his main presentation. Uh, so first of all, I want just to mention that um, 
JS uh, in the field missions were responsible for mainly for situational awareness monitoring and just simply identifying what's happening in the field. So when we work with uh, when we work in the field missions, we can assume that it's not only peacekeeping missions that operates in in in, in the theater. Uh, it's also many different agencies. So for example, like UNICEF that's responsible for um, uh, to take care of the children for educational. Uh, uh, for educational educational services for water and sanitation. Uh, so OHCHR, for example, is responsible for human rights. Uh, ITU for telecommunication. Uh, UNHCR for refugees. UNEP for environment. For, and uh, WFP for food security. So you see when you have some crisis in the field missions, it's not only peacekeeping, it's not only UN field missions that are responsible for delivering services and for taking care of population of concern, it's all these agencies. So which means that when we work with, uh, when we provide GIS services uh, to uh, our peacekeeping uh, colleagues, uh, we also need to extend the services to all these uh, agencies, funds and programs that we work with, um, which also includes uh, geoanalytics. So when, when we started working, uh, identifying what exactly, what kind of analysis we need uh, for uh, peacekeeping missions and also for agencies, funds and programs in the field missions. We came up with UN operations, as you see here, and use of geoanalysis. For example, for situational awareness, it's one of the uh, core component of uh, information management and intelligence in the missions. It's situational awareness, so we need to, uh, first of all, uh, to conduct uh, geoanalysis related to incident analysis, to destruction analysis, quite often we have quite a lot of destructions happening uh, to the livelihood of the communities in, in, uh, in the areas of operation. Safety and security, uh, it's uh, threat analysis, security threat analysis, military operations and protection of civilians because protection of civilians is one of the main components of, in the field missions for, um, uh, for, towards the, uh, towards the um, communities that are working with. So it's intelligence for early detection of threats yeah, so for example, when uh, there is, let's say, an IDP camp or refugee camp, you need to identify, first of all, uh, what kind of threats can occur, and uh, just to be able to analyze and to collect information of uh, those possible threats. Uh, human rights violations and investigation, uh, it's related to atrocities assessment, uh, mass grave investigation. Uh, we quite often use uh, either satellite imagery analysis for this, uh, or uh, raster data analysis, we can also call it this way. Uh, ep ep epidemiological analysis, it's not only WHO, but it's also a uh, uh, UN secretary that works on uh, different uh, epidemiological um, crises. For example, as it was in 2014-15, in West Africa there was a huge Ebola crisis, right? So, and uh, UN responded to, uh, to those crises. So, and for those crises, Dr. Khan did uh, a prediction uh, model for... Um, Ebola vector uh, for for the Ebola vector distribution. Uh, so you have, for UN support, uh, just in general, some sort of logistic support. We need planning of uh, camp uh, establishment, uh, management of mission for mission utilities, groundwater exploration, uh, water pipeline monitoring for environmental. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, we are compliant with rules and regulations of the host countries and also we are compliant with uh, uh, UN uh, guidelines and waste management guidelines. Uh, so, and cross-cutting analysis, it's a threat analysis of road operations because roads are used by all agencies, funds and programs and all partners who, use, who work in, in, uh, in the field. Um, so we did few uh, uh, preliminary sort of work, just first of all to identify how open source can, will, how open source will be able to respond to our requirements. So we uh, um, sent our requirements to Dr. Kang uh, with relation to Ebola predictive model. So that's that's the result of the algorithm. Probably she will tell a little bit more about it, right? Yeah. So and also analyzed uh, 26 uh, journalistical. Um, uh, functions uh, that we had to prioritize and also functions that we wanted to be included in the uh, web uh, platform 
that we were running on, in Spiral 1 or uh, Workgroup 1, as we call it now. So and this is the list of uh, priority functions that we wanted to be embedded in, those, um, uh, in the web platform. Uh, also, we had uh, six simple requirements. First of all, we, uh, we need to have uh, primitive uh, analytical functions, and at the moment, uh, Spiral 3 or Workgroup 3 came up with over 200 different uh, analytical functions. Uh, also, another, uh, one of the ma uh, another main criteria was to be able to compile those analytical functions in some sort of model, right? Uh, so that uh, some of these uh, analytical, some of the steps can be skipped along the process, right? Uh, and the system will provide us the final result without going through each step you know, uh, uh, at once. So uh, the building blocks and build uh, and uh, inbuilt analytical models. So this part we are still working on, right? <laughs> uh, other analysis, uh, other requirements included, uh, as I mentioned already, um, uh, analytical functions should be embedded in uh, web environment and also in desktop environment. For desktop environment, uh, there was uh, software, open source software, UDIC, that was identified. That's uh, one of the, uh, that provided us the, the final solution. Uh, so, and research, uh, we also needed research capacity. For example, like quite, quite often, uh, our colleagues provide us some specific and uh, scientific questions and scientific research. Sometimes we don't know what it is. Uh, it can be related to environment, it can be related to something else. So, for example, I only uh, learned about chlorophyll analysis uh, after trying to identify whether there is a wastewater, untreated wastewater was dumped outside of the, uh, of, the, of the camp in the mission, right? So, but before that I just didn't know and just for me to figure out I had to do some research and uh, one of the requirements was that uh, the Spiral 3 provides the research capacity for some analysis that we are not really um, experts in. Uh, and also training capacity, right? Um, that's, uh, uh, you know, when uh, functions are developed uh, and rolled out so that uh, those capacity will be, uh, trainings will be provided to us. Thank you. So based on that uh, requirement from the United Nations, uh, we uh, 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 developed, uh, you know, uh, Spiral 3, a geoanalysis uh, uh, solution. Still, we are ongoing. So we, uh, in terms of the developing the uh, primitive geoanalytic functions, we. Uh, Timur mentioned uh, more than 200, but in the beginning we started, uh, you know, 140. But you know, the number uh, by uh, considering the uh, requirements from the field, the number became increased. Uh, so, developing the functions and running on the uh, different com uh, computing environment and assessing that is the three main activity in terms of the develop developing the geoanalytic functions. So by comparing other uh, softwares, uh, we summarized uh, what kind of uh, geoanalytic function we provide. So in, in current moment, uh, the oper all the operators uh, working on the desktop environment by using the UDIG software. So Windows, uh, Linux, it doesn't matter. If you are using the GeoTools, then it can be included in your development environment. And if you are using the GeoServer, uh, it the order development result can be plugged into the geo server, so you can use, you know, because we uh, implemented the, the order analytic functions by wrapping UPS uh, WPS standard, so it is uh, uh, available on the internet environment. So if uh, you open, include, plug in the, or our development environment to the UDIG software, you will see this kind of interfaces on your computer. I will introduce it, this one later. And also if you include our development to the Geo server, you will see all the functions here. 
So in terms of the uh, assessment of our development, we mostly com com comparison tests we are doing. So by compare comparing two results from uh, produced different software, proprietary and our development, we compare the results. But you see there are some slight differences. However, you know, it depends on the algorithms. So proprietary software, they didn't open their algorithms. However, there is a standard or uh, published, you know, the paper, we referred that. So in terms of the comparison test, a development team, they, they conduct assessment and also a UN conduct from the client view. So this, is, this slide shows a comparison test conducted by the UNHQ. So they, uh, this, this slide shows a, a, a comparison test for one operation, which is a kernel density. So for the kernel density, uh, proprietary software, they provide just one algorithm on by the, uh, however, uh, our development provides 11 algorithms. So for the kernel density, there are many algorithms. So for instance, quadratic, a different quadratic and other triangular based uh, analysis. So like this way, we have different algorithm uh, with the same operators. And also you can see, you know, the comparison result from here. So the uh, value is slightly different. However, you know, uh, there is no right, you know, analysis result. Just uh, you can provide your uh, uh, alternatives. So decision is from the experts. So if you can see many alternatives and you can uh, decide one, the best one, then I think that is the uh, best way uh, geoanalysis tools can do. So this is another uh, example, the tested. And we finally we tested, you know, uh, proprietary software how uh, it can uh, display well. Or so if you look at the outcome, looks very similar to. However, we had to use two softwares, QGIS and UDIG. For using the analytic functions, we used the UDIG, and to display, we had to use the QGIS because they have better functions provided. So for the uh, Ebola use cases, so we applied this uh, development result to the Ebola scenario. So the data set we used are listed on here. So district, airport, and community care center, etc. we used. So displayed on UDIG software. And for the uh, predictive model, we uh, we, we received, you know, actually this model from the experts in that domain. So, and then this is for um, designed for the uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, proprietary software. So we uh, converted it to uh, for UDIC version. So it looks like this. So district point in polygon operation with uh, a district airport and we generate the result. Very similarly, we uh, pro proceed the operators. So I will explain the each steps. So first, the analytic process is uh, point in polygon. So here, if we um, uh, so the first step is to calculate how many airports are uh, located in district because uh, airport is uh, the uh, potential value to 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 regress um, Ebola spread so first step as uh, point in polygon it was uh, used and second third and fourth step is very similar to use the point in polygon as well and the fourth step, uh, fifth step is uh, using the line density. So if we are uh, using the line, line density uh, operator, we have 
and if we insert the parameters, then we will get the result like this. And the sixth step is using the journal statistics. Also, the journal statistics is provided by the analytic functions. So if we're using the journal statistics, we will get the result like this. And final step was using the uh, ordinary least square operators. So we inserted the parameters, and then we got the result like that. So we got the numbers, you know, uh, applying this uh, OLS operator. So what we, after we get these, all the numbers, so what we did is we compared the numbers and anal analyzed the numbers with the proprietary uh, softwares, and also Excel provide the OLS function as well. So we compared all the results. And depending on the algorithm, uh, sometimes the, our result uh, if we use the same algorithm with Excel, then the numbers was the same with Excel. Anyway, so if we visit uh, this YouTube uh, site, you can see all the process through this uh, web YouTube. So from the uh, installation of a Udigo software, you can start uh, together with uh, this video clip if you'd like to test uh, or follow the uh, Ebola use cases. So like this. Here, data set is introduced. And all the operations you can watch through the web. So if you visit the YouTube and if you insert the keyword, keyword Ebola predictive model or Spiral 3 or UN OpenGIS, you can see all the video clips there. So conclusion. So, so far, I tried to introduce uh, the part of activity uh, of UN OpenGIS Working Group 3, uh, geoanalysis, in terms of uh, requirement and development and the use cases. What we learned from the activity is uh, there is no right or, or wrong answer for the density analysis, not only density analysis. For the, uh, all the analysis functions, there is no uh, one answer many candidates we have. And second one is uh, uh, what we learned is UDIG provide the challenge of a cartograph visualization. It means it's inconvenient. So if there, if uh, any experts from the UDIG community here, I wish they will develop many more convenient you know, user interfaces. So in current moment, we are using QGIS uh, after we produce the analysis functions. And conclusion, uh, through the use case of Ebola predictive model, uh, we found the advantage of our geoanalysis of function in terms of user convenience. Uh, instance, where there's many inconveniences this part, however, we also have a, a nice part, uh, you know, for user, user convenience. For instance, line density function automatically execute the clip operation by parameterizing in it, in its process. So in compared to other software, proprietary software, we have to use the clip operation in separately. However, if you are using line density algorithm here, then we, it's included, you know, the, so we can uh, reduce our process. And so it reduced the number of analysis functions to be executed and consequently becomes to improve user convenience. So this kind of uh, advantage uh, our development has. Still, our work is uh, uh, going on. So um, in terms of integrating our development with the other technologies, for instance, for geoporters and other you know, development. So if you have uh, any interest on uh, participating in this activity, we always welcome you can contact us. So, I try to explain much more uh, about our activity. However, you know, 
not sure it, it was enough or not. So is there any questions about my presentation? Yeah, thank you. Uh, it seems like it's an interactive predictive model. It, could it be completely automated or is it like... The, uh, yeah. Is there a, um, <clears throat> the predictive model seems to be like an interactive uh, analysis part. Uh, could it have been completely automated or is there a, uh, like a very good reason that this will never happen? Uh, interactive model? So interactive model? Yeah, this, or uh, did I misunderstand? There's a number of steps that you do in the inter yes, client yes, interface yes. compared to just... Mm -hmm sending a request and you have an automated model that completes all the uh, uh, all the steps and you get the results back? Well, actually, uh, that is uh, one of our uh, ongoing... Would you want to answer? Yeah, he knows very well <laughs> about that. Uh, so we're also working on um, developing a model builder or some alternative. So just through model builder, there will be some steps can be uh, semi-automated or completely automated. Right. Okay. I'm interested because uh, uh, I come from Norwegian Metrological Institute and we do some work with UNICEF, like Chris Fabian, mm -hmm. uh, today. So. Nice. We're, uh, in current moment, we have a batch function, but it's uh, not enough for you know, um, uh, interactive or um, model builder. So we are still on developing the model builder. So if you have any you know, outcome or knowledge about that, then we can share. Yeah, yeah. not me personally, but... Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> please contact. <laughs> Is there any questions? No? Okay, I see none. So it's uh, 3.27. We will start the third presentation on uh, 30. Thank you very much.